Hey everybody, for lesson four, we're gonna try something a little bit different. It's gonna be not me talking, but you doing a project. So you will need an internet browser eventually so that you can complete this project. It's not gonna be as easy as the other ones where you just like have to click 10 little question quiz at the end and that's all you have to do. You will have, yeah, 10 questions at the end, but you're gonna have to actually fill in answers instead of just like click from multiple choice, okay? If we were in class, we would be doing this in big groups and your whole table would be working together to do the project together. If we do get back before the end of May, I'll probably have you redo this just like I'll have you redo the labs. I'm going to go ahead and do the labs when they come to them at the end. But if we come back to school, I'll redo all those labs and all the projects so that you guys can experience them instead of just, you know, watching a video or doing it online. If you're doing this in your notebook, you would put the title Marine Ecosystems on page 67. Your essential question on the top on the left and above the blue line, what kinds of relationships exist in marine ecosystems? So basically your project is going to be this. You are gonna create your own food web of marine, which is ocean, organisms that show possible relationships from the lessons we've already talked about in lessons one, two, and three. So we've talked about biotic and abiotic things that organisms compete over. We've talked about producers, consumers, and decomposers. We've talked about predator and prey, carnivores, herbivores, energy pyramids, food webs, all kinds of things. So now it's your job to put it all together in an ocean ecosystem. So here is your assignment. You are gonna find two examples of each of the following. You're gonna find two producers, two decomposers, two herbivores, two carnivores, two primary consumers, two secondary consumers, two parasites and their host. By the way, the host is the one that the parasite infects. You need two examples of mutualism. We're gonna for forget commensalism right now because commensalism is really hard and there's not a whole lot of examples of that other than the anemone and the clownfish, which we've already covered, and the hermit crab we've already covered. So really, I'm out of ideas. And then I will want examples of competition. You need to give me two examples of organisms competing for a biotic resource and two examples of organisms competing for abiotic resources. Now, when you're finding these things, you cannot double up. So you cannot use the same carnivore under carnivore and then also listed under secondary consumer. You're gonna have to have different organisms that are carnivores and different organisms that are secondary consumers. Even though technically they do overlap, I will want you to have different ones. So there are some possible resources that I checked out that you can use to help you out with this assignment. You can go to the Monterey Bay Aquarium, which is at montereybayaquarium.org. You can go to the Dallas World Aquarium, which is at dwazoo.org. Or you can go to the National Aquarium in Baltimore, which is at aqua.org. So I want to help some of you out as you're looking through the resources that I gave you, okay? Here is the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Uh, if you scroll down, there are some fun things you can check out. Yes, they have an otter cam. They also have a jellyfish camp where you can watch their jellyfish all the time as well but where i will want you to check out is over here where it says animals so if you go to animals you can pick on them or you can go by the different type of habitats that they have available so say i want to check out the sea otters because they're adorable so i would just click on sea otter and it would show me some pics of it and i could keep on going and it would tell me about them the habitat where they live what size they are what they eat, so that will help you decide whether they're, you know, producers, consumers, or decomposers. Scientific names that are listed there. You can see how big they are. You can have more about their habitat and diet. Um, you can see some adorable pictures of them. Oh, look, is that so adorable? At the Dallas World Aquarium, which is dwazoo.com, you would want to check out the Explore and then pick Aquarium. If you don't pick aquarium, you'll get some like frogs and lizards and things like that that are not necessarily marine ecosystem. So you would click aquarium 
and every single page it does get annoying you get this little alert and so you have to keep like clicking off of it and if you go to a new page guess what that shows up but that's okay all these different things you can check out you can click on learn more and it tells you more and keep in mind notice there's plenty of pages so don't just pick the first one because everybody's going to pick the first one but you can go to a different page and again here's our awesome closure alert thank you and you can check out some organisms on the other pages so i want to do the jellyfish i would click there it tells me what the uh again awesome closure alert thank you it tells me what the scientific name is right underneath the name of it when you turn in your answer though you only have to say moon jellyfish if you want to say the scientific name you can and again it has all the same stuff it tells you the size the behavior the diet information about its range and habitat all those things if you check out the national aquarium in baltimore you will want to go to the experience tab right here where it has your animals they do have some live cameras as well so if you click on animal index you can scroll down and it'll show you all the different animals and of course you probably want to go with some of the fish some of the sharks a lot of the invertebrates okay please do not pick the monkey uh, but you can use the dolphin and some of these you have to check the reptiles to see which ones are freshwater and which ones are saltwater so example that australian freshwater crocodile that first one there fresh water is not ocean so you wouldn't want to use that if it's not living in the ocean but this one's nice because it has nice big pictures that you can click on and then of course when you click on your picture it'll tell you more about that organism it'll give you some more pictures of that organism and then it'll give you all the information about the diet the size the range range is another word for habitat by the way and all the information about that organism so you will need to use something where you can click and find out information so i'm not sure how it will look if you look it up on a cell phone but hopefully these websites won't be too difficult for you to use if you're using something other than a computer all right so that's your project keep in mind when you're looking up your organisms you can't just use something like fish that is not specific enough for me to be able to tell what you're talking about. Likewise, you cannot use something like shark. Do you know how many different species there are of shark? I'm gonna need you to give me one. All right, everybody, so that's the summary of your lesson for Marine Ecosystem Project. You'll need to go to one of those websites or pick a different one. You'll need to find all of the organisms that I asked you to find, and you're gonna need to fill it out in the Google Classroom. Good luck, stay safe. Let me know how everything goes. And remember, there are 40 people who are not doing their assignments. So check up on your friends. They're not okay. They're not passing. And this is my cat, and he approves this message.